to me what inspired the whole world or inspired the whole environmental movement was that first picture of the earth that we took from space. Now we all talk about planetary health, planetary this, planetary that. We've come to this point because we can now understand the climate of our earth as a planet. And we could only have done that through the information we have got by putting satellites in space. If we had continued to make all our measurements on Earth, in the sea or in the forest, it would have been very difficult to get this planetary picture. And so everybody understood, oh my God, we are staying in that on this one planet, it's all what we are, uh, nothing beyond that. And people don't see boundaries, you know. Um, there's nothing to see that will differentiate us and the Americans, for instance, except for the distance. So we understood that we are one race, one human race on this planet. And so that, uh, more than anything else, justifies why we need to be in space. Once I came back to Malaysia, I was in this vacuum where nobody else was an astrophysicist or even understood what was space or astronomy. At the university, it was clear um, that astrophysics was not a thrust. I had to convince people to create a little micro ecosystem for myself where I could continue to become this researcher and lecturer. I had to live in the mountains with temperature of minus 15 degrees, and snow one meter deep. Because you had to be in the mountains to get the clearest skies, you'd work at night. The university itself, they were not interested. It was very clear I wasn't going to get research grants. This is horrible for, for an academic, of course, because this would be uh, difficult for an academic who needs to publish papers if he or she is not getting um, grants, research grants. And it was also very clear that in Malaysia itself, the public did not understand uh, what is space and why is space important uh, to humankind, in fact. So that first barrier was to get people to, everybody, you know, to understand what is uh, astronomy, what is space. What I tried to do was to merge my interest with other people's interest so that they could see benefit from what I was trying to do. A good example is at university was that in order to study the stars, I had to study the atmosphere first. And I also acquired the technical skills to study the atmosphere. And I then realised that at that stage, when I first came back to Malaysia, the skills that I could give right away was this ability to measure the parameters of the atmosphere. So I could look at pollution, uh, which was very important in an urban context at that time. And there was an urban research group. And so I joined that urban research group, but I brought in that information on the atmosphere and the air pollution. But I always had to find what was that interest, you know? Uh, so um, for the urban pollution group, they wanted to know about ozone or carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide, and I had to adjust what I knew about those things. So in order for me to have gone down that path, I had all the time to adapt myself to their interests as well, while maintaining the skills that I had and contributing the skills that I had. I brought in that information on the atmosphere and the air pollution. So while I was not doing astronomy, I was doing half astronomy because I was still looking up. And 
I loved that interaction uh, with that urban group. I also equally enjoyed going out to the public. And I took advantage of the fact that uh, a lot of Malaysians um, were concerned about the sighting of the new moon, you know. So that was the first astronomical phenomenon that I wrote on. I knew that I had to focus on the public. This is where things need to be done. Of course, the university uh, management wasn't interested at all, <laughs> but the public was. And then once that, that happens, if I get public support, then of course, university management um, will have to pay attention. Now, Pusat Islam had this problem of the new moon. Eh? How do you observe the new moon? How do you get some clarity on determining when Hari Raya is? Eh? And I worked with them to try and solve that problem. But having got them interested in uh, talking to me in solving that problem, I also managed to tell them that public outreach in terms of them understanding the aspects of the moon and astronomy uh, convinced them that we should have the National Planetarium. So if you think that how did this idea of the National Planetarium uh, come up, it was through my work with Pusat Islam. And so it is an unlikely ally, but um, it happened because uh, Islamic astronomy is one of the biggest uh, achievements of um, Islam in terms of uh, pursuit of knowledge. Later on, I embarked on something that was really um, not yet in people's minds or people's interest. In this case, I had been asked by the Prime Minister to set up the National Satellite Program. This was totally new. And um, I didn't have the skills actually to build a satellite, of course not. Uh, I, was, I, I, am, I was an M, an astrophysicist, and uh, if you tell me, Mazlan built me a satellite, of course I, I couldn't, and I still can't. But even before I could bring those skills to the table, I had to persuade everyone why the satellite program was important. I couldn't just say, the Prime Minister has said that we should do this. Of course not. I had to myself find the reasons why it was important for Malaysia to embark on a space program and starting with building a satellite. That was very challenging. I had to convince them about the importance of space and why it's necessary for a country uh, to embark uh, on, a, on a space program for security, for, for economic reasons. The satellite program is part of a bigger space program. And we're looking at why is a space program important for a country. We're, we're not the US or Japan, so why is a space program so important? Is because space itself um, represents the ultimate in knowledge, it represents the ultimate in technology. So in order to embark on a space program, you would have to ramp up your technological capability and capacity to the highest in the world. And when you aim for the highest, you bring everything up with you, whether it is computer software, whether it's electronics, whether power systems, you have to ramp all of those up to the highest level possible. So when a country embarks on a program to, em to ramp up those capabilities and capacities, it is good for everyone. These were the aspects the leaders were interested in. It is good for industry, it is good for R&D. And so that was one of the first things I persuaded people that in order to build a satellite, these are some things we have to do. 
So it's all about understanding what your audience wants to hear and relate your innovation to their needs. The next time you find yourself advocating for innovation, pause and reflect. How does it benefit others, both now and in the future? Now, because I overcame those uh, obstacles, I managed to move on to achieve what I had set out to do for myself as well as for the country. And so can you. Thank <laughs> you.